Characters rig, no matter how powerful your computer is, can get very laggy real quick. Often enough, you can no longer get a real-time playback in your 3D viewport. And that's one animator's worst nightmare. I'm Pierre from P2 Design and in this video, I will show you how you can drastically improve your rig's performances. Let's get started. Before we try to solve the problem, we need to understand it. And this is the problem we want to solve. We have a simple animation of a cube and the frame rate is below 24 frames per second. Now, this is not exactly a simple cube. This is a cube with a lot of subdivision and a vertex count of almost 900,000 vertices. So you may think that I'm totally dumb and the solution is to use a real cube and we're done. But if I now switch to another cube, you can see that my frame rate is 24 frames per second and we have a smooth animation. But this one also has almost 900,000 vertices. So I may not be so dumb in the end. So if it's not the dumber of polygons and those two cubes use the same rig, what makes the difference? Let's have a quick look to the rig. It's made of three bones, a squash and stretch bone, a root bone and one deformation bone. And both cubes are using the same rig. Checking the red cube, we can see that it has a subdivision modifier with a label of 6 subdivisions and it has an armature modifier. It's bound to the armature using only one deformation group corresponding to the deformation bone in the middle. If we now check the blue cube, it also has subdivision modifier with a label of 6 subdivisions but it has no armature modifier. The cube deformation is driven by the bone as the cube is a child of the bone. And while there's no visual difference between the blue cube and the red cube, deformation-wise, the way these deformations are calculated is pretty different. The red cube uses an armature modifier to deform it. On each frame, the position of each vertices is calculated based on those modifiers. While on the blue cube, it's child and parent relationship and those deformations are calculated at the object level. It's like scaling and moving the cube object instead of moving each vertices separately. So how can we apply this to a character rig? As an example, I will use my character rig Trident from the course Alive. You can also get this rig for free on p2designacademy.com. The first thing you want is to put your armature into rest position. This way you're sure there is no transformation applied to any bones. And if you have an action active, just close it. Now what we do is to jump back into object mode, select our character object and duplicate it and move it to a new collection. It's important to separate your object in different collections. The idea is to be able to deactivate the collection in which the slow object is. If you just hide the object, you won't get that much performance improvement. But if you deactivate the collection, then the object is no longer calculated at all and you get smooth animation. Once your mesh is duplicated, you can give it a more relevant name like Trident Low Poly or whatever. And then the idea is to remove the modifiers that slows down the 3D viewport. In our case, the subdivision modifier and the armature modifier. Then you need to show only the skinning bone or deformation bones. On this rig, it's the very first layer. I have some corrective bones, but I will only be using the main deformation bones. From there, as I see my rig in transparency, I will tab into edit mode and the idea is to separate your character in different objects. So basically, I just follow the topology of the character and I try to cut him in different slices. Double clicking to select a loop, then pressing V to rip the vertices. Once two loops are ripped, I can press L to select the vertices in between and P to separate them. I now have a new object and I will repeat the process for all the bones along my character's body. So it's a bit of a tedious process and I let you know how much time it took me to prepare the rig in a few seconds. But believe me, it's worth it. I worked on a project where it was such a pain to animate because I couldn't reach a real-time viewport playback. And we used this method and it was such a joy afterward. So the little time spent here will definitely be worth it later on.
then you should give each part a relevant name. That's why I display the different bones name. I will give all those objects the same name as the bone. And once you're done with that, first select one of the object, then the abature and go into pose mode. Then press Ctrl P to parent the object to the bone and choose bone. Now you don't need to go back and forth into object mode to be able to select the other object. Just use the outliner. Then select the next bone, press Ctrl P and choose bone. And you'll need to do that for all the separated pieces of your character. Now there's one exception. I advise you to keep your head rig separated. So basically just separate the head of your character and give it an armature modifier. Separating the face in small pieces is really not ideal. So I keep the head as a classic rigged mesh, but the other part of the body will be children of the different bones in my armature. Before I show you the final result, I just want to let you know that my friend Jan, also known as Jan Sculpt, is back on YouTube and is running sales on his Gumroad page. He has great courses to learn character sculpting and character modeling in Blender. You'll find an affiliate link in the description below and by supporting him, you are also supporting my channel. Use the code below to get 25% off on all his products. Converting and parenting the model took me 35 minutes. If I play the animation on the example rig, I get to about 7 to 8 frames per second. Note that this is a test rig, the original rig is optimized for the best performances. Now if I switch to our proxy model, I get a real-time playback without any problem. So next time you build a rig, once you're done, if it's too laggy, just think about this trick. I'm sure you already spotted this kind of geometry or this kind of character in feature film breakdowns. You can use the proxy model for almost the whole animation process. And when polishing, you can switch to the iPoly model. This is the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one.